Now, let me introduce uh, Mr. Alex Aiken, Executive Director for the Government Communications, Prime Minister's Office and Cabinet Office Communication of the United Kingdom. Mr. Dr. Brian. Dr. Brian, thank you uh, very much. And it's a pleasure and a privilege to speak at the uh, WHO and to contribute uh, in a sense of humility and I hope uh, opportunity to this really important debate and to uh, follow uh, Victor's our colleague from uh, Latvia where I've been to and talked to the Latvian government about the importance of tackling uh, disinformation on a society-wide level but today I want to talk and build on the history of collaboration that the World Health Organization and the United Kingdom government have and make an offer to all uh, the countries and governments involved about how we can collectively and effectively tackle uh, disinformation. First, as the WHO has pointed out, we do face an infodemic, and that challenge poses a serious, poses a serious challenge to vaccine confidence, and more widely, a challenge to confidence in government. As The Lancet has demonstrated in a survey of 149 countries, vaccine confidence is dropping across the world. And the failure to address this compromises our response to the pandemic and, in addition, global and indeed local health outcomes. So the responsibility of a response is shared. I was struck by a recent survey from the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine who said that after people have been shown misinformation on vaccines, citizens who said they would definitely accept a COVID vaccine fell by over 6%, 6 and this brought the rate below the level needed for population level immunity. So we know that disinformation and misinformation has an effect. And if we are to, to tackle that, we have to do this together. I have um, spent the last uh, eight months, like everyone on this at this conference, trying to contribute to the global fight against this dreadful virus. And communications has proved in the United Kingdom and indeed in other countries to be a powerful lever for public good, to shape public behaviours. In the UK, the hands, face, space campaign to, uh, to encourage the public to adopt the right behaviours has been central to our work. We've also, in the cross-government effort, had a strong team working to counter disinformation on 5G conspiracies and other areas. So we've developed a certain expertise in this area. And we've shared that we're working with the UN and the World Health Organization and the uh, universities. We have developed the Go Viral online game, which is aimed at younger people, and it teaches them about the dangers of uh, of misinformation and how they can combat it. We've mobilized our rapid response unit in the UK, which every week deals with up to 70 issues of misinformation and works with the social media companies and civil society to tackle disinformation. But as we now approach the rollout of uh, vaccines, we have, to have, we have to recognize that the pandemic uh, and the infodemic, an infodemic doesn't respect borders, which is why we are supporting a global response and that collaboration across the whole of society. And we expect to make this a central part of our agenda as the United Kingdom uh, chairs the G7 in uh, 2021. 20, uh, Everyone has to work together on this, public, private and civil society and will draw on the excellent and innovative work undertaken by the WHO. We believe that the framework for tackling the infodemic has three pillars, principles, partnering, and platforms. In terms of uh, principles, we need to work with partners to develop a best practice approach that will prove effective at a global uh, level. We know that fundamentally what works is telling powerful stories through trusted intermediaries, particularly those from this community, from the scientific and medical and public health uh, professions. This trusted coalition in partnership with government 
can meaningfully impact public health outcomes and reassure people, give them the confidence in the vaccines that the world scientists are developing. And we believe that using that as a starting point, we can build a holistic and evidence-based approach to the pandemic. Central to this work is the project the United Kingdom is leading uh, through the OECD, to, which involves around 50 countries from around the world, to develop a framework for public service communications. And the heart of that is attempting to break down boundaries between public health communicators and central government communicators to get people to work together. And what there could be no more important task than working together on tackling the pandemic. And I think I would also make the point that communication, in my view, is science, not sport or art. And to effectively tackle the pandemic, as we have found in the UK, you need press officers and marketing people, but you also need data scientists, behavioural experts and counter disinformation specialists. Turning to partnering, as Dr Tendros has been quoted as saying, we are not just fighting an epidemic, we are fighting an infodemic. And fake news spreads faster and more easily, I would argue, than the virus and, just as and is just as dangerous. Partnering means encouraging people to build on best practice. In the UK, we have utilised uh, universities. I've talked about the Go Viral campaign, and we also have our Resist framework for tackling disinformation, which is available publicly on the UK government's website, gov.uk, and I would encourage colleagues to use and build and indeed improve upon uh, that. So with partners, we can deliver a global campaign and global uh, impact. And we'll work, of course, with the WHO, but also with anyone who wants to come together and join that coalition, as we heard from Victor earlier on in this uh, session. And we will convene a global vaccine confidence summit, which will be a collaborative effort and focus global attention on the issues. Finally, on platforms, we need the necessary communications infrastructure that will enable this whole of society, this global effort to come uh, together. There is an urgent need uh, to do this. And together with the WHO and technology partners, we are looking to build a groundbreaking platform that can address these challenges, that will underpin the communications uh, effort. Throughout the world, we've endured uh, the same uh, challenges over the uh, pandemic. And we have drawn on the uh, inspiration and the knowledge of countries as diverse as Germany, New Zealand, and Singapore, and Japan, and uh, Korea. And we'll take those lessons in to our presidency of the G7 uh, next year. But we need now to take action to address the immediate threat. So in closing, I would say that alongside our global partners, the UK is using its leadership position as G7 president to tackle the threat of the infodemic head on. We're ambitious in our goals, but we think this is necessary for the challenge we face. And this is a once in a generation opportunity. If we don't get this right, it has the potential to have long term and a detrimental effect on public health. It will undermine confidence in future vaccines. It will damage public health initiatives and trust in government and indeed non-governmental institutions. There is no room for a plan B. We passionately believe that with concerted global unit leadership, where the UK will play its part, and through the WHO and our partners in academia and the social media companies and the private sector, we will win the fight against the infodemic. Thank you very much for this opportunity to contribute to your discussions. Thanks a lot, uh, Mr. Aiken, for those very uh, wise words. Uh, indeed, you are right. Uh, uh, we need always to remember that building trust is absolutely crucial for an effective response to an epidemic or a pandemic. And everything that uh, fuels distrust will undermine uh, this response. And so, and this is also no other way than uh, working together in partnership to build this trust. And that's why we are very happy to learn about the experience of UK and also uh, your um, um, plan for the future that will be, of course, very important to uh, factor in in the discussion of today and, and for future uh, discussions around infodemic management. So thank you again.